Oh, I was all over the place. I still, mm -hmm. I still am, like, just like in and out of personas. I was definitely super weird. I was like the weird kid at school. <laughs> I, I wasn't like picked on or anything, but like I was definitely like the weird kid, the, like the nature kid who liked animals and like just like weird music. It was like me and my one friend really liked dubstep, so we like listened to like that Aww. kind of stuff. We like sit in the like circle at like lunch and be yeah. like, yeah, dubstep. <laughs> and he was like, hey, like, you should come down to LA and you know, like do some stuff with Ausla. Like, uh, Sunny would like you to do some stuff. Oh, sick. Hi, today I'm here with Montana Mart. Hi. I've been watching your, like, looking at her stuff for like a year and your videos That's on awesome. YouTube, and it's like, so nice, especially like the color touching. Oh, thank you. I'm so such much. a color touching person, so I'm like, oh my god, I have to like meet you and interview <laughs> you. <laughs> so, you were born in Toronto, right? Um, I was actually or... born in Montreal. Oh. But then when I was, uh, I think I was like one. My parents moved to Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, and then I grew up there. Oh. Yeah. So what did your parents move to Toronto for? Um, I'm actually not sure. Mm -hmm. Like, my mom, uh, when she was younger, she was a model in Montreal. Oh, wow. And then that's where she met my dad. Yeah. And I'm honestly not sure. I should probably ask them that. I have no, <laughs> idea, where, no idea where they went to yeah. Toronto. But, uh... I guess, yeah, they decided to move to Toronto. It's like, we live a little bit outside Toronto mm. in, a, in like a forested area. Oh, so, that's so you know, nice. Maybe they just wanted to go there and live yeah. like, kind of far off. But And it was kind of more like suburbs or how was it like? Yeah, it's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like a neighborhood that's like, we're kind of close to like a suburb area, but it's, um, it's very much like in the forest. Like yeah. all the houses are really far apart. It's really awesome. Yeah. Like, big backyard. I got to grow up in uh, grow up in nature, which is really mm -hmm. awesome. So. And you had horses like pretty young, right? Um. Yeah. I think my mom had a horse. Um, she's always been like riding horses since she was younger, and then she got me into it when I was like, I think I was like six or seven. Yeah. And you competed, right? Yeah. Wow. Did you do a lot of training or how was it like? Yeah, it was, um, it was like pretty intense, like every day after school and, uh, it was lots of fun though, but it's not something I wish I could still do it. Like I love riding. I wish I could still compete, but yeah. not like with the lifestyle I have now. Cause mm -hmm. like you have to just always be riding your horse and always yeah. be practicing. How many yeah. years did you do it for? Hmm. I would say like five. Wow. I can't exactly remember, but like probably five or six years, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that part of your life made you the person you are now? Um, well, it definitely got me way more into photography because I would spend like, after I ride my horse, I just spend like all this time at the oh. barn taking photos of the horses at the horse shows. When I'd be like, not when I wasn't competing, I'd mm. stay the extra days and take photos of everyone. And uh, it really helped me learn a lot about my camera and like, it really helped me, um, Help me, help me learn um, really well how to take photos of stuff that's moving really fast. That's which true. Has helped me a lot. Actually, even with yeah. like the shows and stuff, you probably need to like learn a lot of that. Yeah. So like when I'm photographing like artists on stage, you know, they might be like moving around and stuff. It helps me like just help me, yeah, figure out all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, just yeah, I guess just you know, growing up like in nature and then being around animals, <laughs> and horses <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think. It's really helped me have a really, really big appreciation for nature, mm. and uh, I definitely want to do more uh, nature-related things yeah. in the future, like uh, documentaries and oh, uh, that wow. kind of stuff, like National Geographic kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's so sick. It's kind of like my end goal. Yeah. So. Um, how do you describe yourself like growing up? Hmm. Oh, I was all over the place. I still, <laughs> I still am. Like. Just like in and out of personas. I was definitely super weird. I was like the weird kid at school. <laughs> I'd, I wasn't like picked on or anything, but like I was definitely like the weird kid, the, like the nature kid who liked animals and like just like weird music. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was that was me. What kind of music were you listening to back then? Like already oh. electronic or? Um, it started off with like, I was like super into Johnny Cash and the Beatles. Like I was obsessed with mm -hmm. Beatles, all that kind of stuff and Led Zeppelin. And then, uh, then it like progressed to like Blink 182 and A Day to Remember. And then, um, as every like little girl did, I went through like my little Justin Bieber phase. <laughs> but uh, I think it was like before that. Yeah. It, like the first time I like really like paid attention to electronic music was. Um, it's funny. I'd watch these like videos on YouTube where people would make edits to like horses, like jumping oh, and stuff. Oh, that's how you. Oh yeah, my so god. Yeah, that's like kind of like how I learned how to make videos. Cause uh, I would watch like, tutorials and these like girls they would make really dope edits to people and horses and mm -hmm. horses like running around. Oh. And I watched one that was like to um, 
bass head by Bass Nectar, and I was yeah. like, what is this weird music? Mm-hmm. And I really liked it, so then I started getting like, really into like Bass Nectar and like yeah. dubstep. Oh, um, how old were you back then when you I started? I think I was like, I think I was like in grade like five or six. Yeah. Um, so I'm not even sure. I was pr- I was like pretty young, like like young enough that like none of my other friends had like any idea what dubstep was. They're like, yeah. what the hell is this music? Um, like they were like all like, yeah. you know, like Justin Bieber phase, and mm-hmm. I was like, I like dubstep. So then <laughs> it was like me and my one friend really liked dubstep, so we like listened to like that Aww. kind of stuff. We like sit in the like circle at like lunch and be yeah. like, yeah, dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> what were your favorite subjects back then? Oh, definitely art. Yeah, you were yeah. like all out. Like I was, yeah, I was like the yeah. art kid for sure. I really liked, yeah. Yeah. Do your parents do art as well, or where do you think you got that um, interest from? My mom is, like, pretty good at drawing. Oh. My dad, like, likes... My dad was really into photography and, like, nature and stuff, so he yeah. was kind of the one who got me into it. Um, he was always, like, he, like, got me a camera, and oh, wow. we always watch National Geographic together and, like, those nature things. So yeah. that's, like, definitely where I got that mm. influence from. And right. then, yeah, my mom was... My mom's a really good... She's really good at drawing and yeah. stuff, but... She doesn't, like, do it very much. I just kind of, like, was always into that. Yeah. yeah. What jobs are they in? Um, well, after my mom finished modeling, like, before I was born, then she's just, like, a mom mm-hmm. do, house, doing those mom, mom things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, she has her horse, and she does, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then um, my dad is, like, I always kind of like, forget how to describe it, but he, um, he, ha- he owned a business um, where they would... Basically, like, they would make, like, all sorts of, like, random stuff to put in Walmart. Like, they did, like, a whole, like, um, NHL, like, themed, like, you know, they did, like, jerseys and, like, snow globes. Like, kind of, like, that, like, random cheap Mm -hmm. stuff that people... They did, like, Justin Bieber, like, Christmas tree ornaments. They did, like, Spongebob themed stuff. Like, just that random stuff. The kind of stuff that, like, my dad would never buy. But he knows, (laughs) like, a lot of people like it and stuff that kids see. And they're like, oh, I want that. Yeah. And, uh... So that's what basically what they did, and they just like sell it in like stores like Walmart. And, yeah. And uh, that's cool. Yeah. So now now he's retired, but that's mm-hmm. what he did for like a while. So. Did he get into art first or photography, like drawing? Definitely drawing. Yeah. Like since I was really little, like always like drawing. Like it's so funny. I look back at the little books that I would uh, write uh, at school when I was a kid. And they're, like, super elaborate drawings. They're not very great. But, like, from, like, kindergarten. And then, like, the stories were yeah. so weird. Like, <laughs> really? What were like, they? Oh, my God. There was, like, so many. There was, like, one where, like, it was, like, I forgot what my name was. I forgot who I was. It mm-hmm. was, like, so, it was, like, really deep. And I was, like, in kindergarten. I was, like, today I woke up and I forgot my name. I forgot who I was. Oh, wow. So I asked my mom who I was. She said, you're Montana. And I said, yay. <laughs> That's the story. But there's some of like, it, there's some of those, like, I flew really close to the moon and it was, like, three different colors. And then there will be, like, a lot. They're, like, I found a dragon. And the dragon turned me into a dragon. And we did all this stuff. Uh, they'd, be, they'd be, like, they get, like, super weird. Yeah. And, like, sometimes, they're, like, there's a lot of creepy ones about, like, me turning into a ghost. And like finding like all this dead stuff, and then like it's the so water cool, and the lake was red because I found like the golden tooth <laughs> of the monster. Like just all oh this like God. random stuff. Like they're always like monster. Like yeah. there's a lot of scary. I really like horror stuff when I was little. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So your first camera, your dad bought it for you. Or? Uh, yeah, for Christmas when I was. Uh, I don't how even know how old? old I was. I have no idea. I was like pretty young. Um, I would say I used to always use my mom's. Like start off, I'd use my mom. My mom had like a little handy cam, mm-hmm. and. Uh, me and my friends would uh, get together on every like Friday after school. Um, I think we're, I don't even know how old we were, we were pretty young. Like all the way like from like kindergarten and stuff. Yeah. Um, and we would just like, I'd get my mom to film us like doing random plays. Like I'd make mm-hmm. up like weird, weird like things to do. And then it's- Are you start- into acting? Um, I liked, yeah, I liked acting, but it was more like, I liked just like making up stories and then like mm. having it like happen. Yeah. So, uh, and then I, then I started being the one with the camera and then me and my friends would make like really weird like movies, like every Friday after school would make just yeah. like, just, or like horror, we'd always make like horror movie trailers and then we'd be like, Hey, we're gonna make the horror movie next Friday, but then we get a new idea. So <laughs> we start another trailer, <laughs> but, um, so we'd always do a lot of horror movie stuff. I was really into that. Yeah. So, uh, so that was like how it started, and then, and then um, finally for Christmas, my parents got me a camera, and then. Do you remember what model it was? 
Uh, it was it was like a I think it was a Canon like Rebel T3i. I think that's like, the first one I had. To. Yeah, it's a very good. Like, <laughs> and I was first like 15. One. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty good first one. Yeah, so you can cool. change the lenses. Yeah. So course. you're shooting mostly like or uh, like pets first. Yeah, pets, animals. I think or I think the fir well the first like camera like I got was like when I was really little. It was like just like some little. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think it was like an Olympus like waterproof camera, and I bring it mm -hmm. to Florida and take pictures of all the lizards. Oh. Um, and do all that. So take pictures of yeah. flowers. Um, do you ever? But did you, do you do classes in it? Like no, I never. You took just self taught. A, yeah, I just self taught. Um, did you watch like YouTube videos or how? Yeah, when I well, like when I was younger, I just kind of like read the manuals and self taught myself, mm -hmm. and then as I got older, I started watching YouTube videos more about like editing, yeah. and then and then I started making more friends who are into photography. Like after high school is when I like really got into like learning everything like really well, mm -hmm. and like. Uh, a bunch of like my friends would like kind of taught me like they were really really good and they taught me like everything I needed to know mm. like not everything you know but like the basics and like the best programs to use and then yeah. I started you know really getting into it what programs were you using back then um well it started off with uh when I was like really little I started off like using I think it's called like Sunny Vegas or something hmm. Sony Vegas yeah and then oh they're like in-house like owned yeah, yeah I don't even know it was like super confusing and then I started <laughs> and then I got Final Cut and then, um, and then I got Premiere. Oh. Um, so anything Adobe now is like all the stuff that I use. Same. Yeah. yeah Adobe is great. They have all the all the best stuff. Was it easy for you to figure out your unique style of editing? Because I feel like you're super cohesive. Um, yeah, it kind of just happened. Like, I just like try different stuff out, and it happened pretty fast. And I was like, oh, this is what I like to do. I mean, I still always try to try, like I try to do new stuff, but it kind of ends up yeah. always like. You know, being like my kind of style, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but yeah, it, it's always evolving. I'm sure, like you know, in a couple months or a year from now, it's gonna be completely different. Mm -hmm. you, know, you never know. But did you have some photographers that you started out you were inspired by, um, or videographers? Yeah, lots for sure. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I'm not even sure. Like when I was younger, it was just mainly like just like anything in like the National Geographic mm. magazine. So I was like super into. Yeah. And then. Um, and then I started, um, you know, like looking at photographers and stuff on Instagram. And then um, I think like my biggest like inspiration would be like um, one of my really good friends now. His name's Liam Underwood, and he's oh, incredible. Yeah. And he's actually the person who got me down to LA. Oh. Um, we would just like I was like so like obsessed with all his work. And then we would message on Instagram and like he'd like give me tip like little tips or just like you know talk about like cool ideas for like music videos. And he was like, hey, like, you should come down to LA and you know like do some stuff with Auzla. Like uh, Sunny would like you to do some stuff. Oh, sick! And so like, he was, already showed your work to Sunny. Yeah, that was like kind of like one of the like. Damn! How many years ago was that? This was uh, two years ago. Mhm. Mm yeah, it was, or like one and a half years ago. Um, Damn, around, everything moved so quickly. Yeah, then. it moved really fast. It was probably like one of the craziest things. Cause before that, like I didn't really know anyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was shooting kind of like music festivals, but I was like had not met anyone, and like I was still like really like starstruck by like all the artists, and mm. I was a huge like you know like EDM fan, and you know like Skrillex is definitely one of you know my biggest inspirations like yeah. music wise and just like the way he did things, and uh, and it was just crazy because I didn't know anyone. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm at night, I like on Instagram at night, and then I see this like Skrillex followed you, and I'm like, that's got to be a mistake. Oh my like, god, that's a fake account. And I was like, <laughs> and it wasn't. I was like, what? Like, why would he follow me? I was freaking out. Um, that was like, you know, back then. And then now it's just crazy how far things come, and yeah. everyone's kind of like a homie. And it's just great to be, you know, surrounded by people that I looked up to so much when I was younger, and definitely still look up to. Like, no matter how close I am to someone, like. I still will always look up to them. I definitely like have gotten past that whole like starstruck phase. Mm. Um, but um, it's like I, I don't find myself ever, you know, starstruck by people just because they're famous. It's just mm -hmm. anyone who's like extremely talented. Like they could be someone who is like, you know, possibly like less known than I am. Like it could be someone completely random. But like if I'm super inspired by their work, then I'm like, whoa, like yeah. so cool. Mm -hmm. So. And how did it, so then you graduated from high school and then yeah. you started doing like monthly trips here or how did it work initially? Uh, yeah, so I graduated high school and like it was literally like right like before graduation I went to, uh, I shot my first music festival at like my friend knew like the 
person running it and it was mm -hmm. the music festival's first time so they're like oh yeah you can have a media pass and that's where i met a bunch of friends that do a lot who did a lot of traveling and who kind of taught me everything and then we uh later on planned a uh, trip to hawaii and we just kept going to hawaii for like a oh of time. Yeah, yeah i saw those so they're that was sick. like kind of where like i definitely learned a lot and made a like bunch of cool stuff and got super inspired yeah so that's kind of like how it all like how i started that's how i started getting to video because before that i was like mostly like i knew video stuff but I, I wasn't really like, good at it and I did mostly like photos and I only thought like I was going to do photos and then it's kind of like when I was going to Hawaii I learned how to like make like edits yeah properly yeah so mm -hmm. that was like that was great yeah that's so cool and then how did you start getting into because you tour with a lot of these people like doing pictures yeah was it difficult to like tour with an artist or how did um, you learn how to do that I don't, know, I, can't, I don't remember what my first like tour tour was but hmm I don't even know I just um it's definitely difficult. I still find it difficult. Always like learning new things. Mm -hmm. um, I have like a long way to go before I'm like confident. Like, I mean, I'm never gonna be like, oh, I'm done learning this because you're yeah. always growing. But right now it's still like, I feel like I have so much more to do like um, to learn. But um, I don't really remember how it started. It just like, I just kept doing music festivals. And then when Liam and everyone like brought me down uh, to LA to, you know, like hang out with them and like, do some edits they kind of you know they introduced me to a lot of people and uh just taught me a bunch of stuff so that's kind of like where it all started yeah. you know, happening what would you say has been like your craziest like tour you did like the australia one and then like asia yeah. it looks so sick well definitely like going to uh japan was pretty mm -hmm. crazy yeah um yeah J uh, japan was really cool like just like going there and that was like pretty crazy because we went from india and then we went straight from India to Red Rocks and then went to Japan. Yeah. So that was pretty dope. Um, I think my favorite tour I ever did was um, the bus tour with Zed's Dead just because it was a bus tour and I also love those guys and yeah. I learned a lot. Um, and just being on a bus is super, super, yeah. super cool. Lots of like really awesome times just hanging out and it's just great not to like have to get on a flight or anything oh, and that yeah. was like just such a long tour I think it was like almost like three months Damn. I was like I think it was like yeah it was like two or three I feel like it was a very long time mm -hmm. um that was that was really fun like the shows yeah. were really crazy Damn. um I felt very like very inspired and creative mm -hmm. on there and uh, just all the people I met so that one was fun um so yeah any time I've like gone anywhere cool it's been fun but um bus tours are definitely like super yeah. awesome have you ever felt any discrimination being female? Um, there's definitely been a couple moments where I've seen it, but it's never, it's never been anything that I, I feel like should be said. Like people seem to make they make it such a like big thing. They're like, oh, it's so hard to be a female in the industry. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. I was here like people like complaining about that, and I just don't think it's anything worth, you know, feeling like either nervous about or like you know complaining over because it's like the more you pay attention to it like the more that's gonna stop you from getting anywhere if you just kind of like power through it and if like you you know feel any sort of discrimination like you know just don't focus on that because it's gonna happen like shitty things are gonna happen all the time no matter what like to every everyone has their own problems you know no matter who you are you're gonna face moments where you don't particularly think mm -hmm. it's fair but it's so important not to you know make it something more than it is it's it's dumb and it sucks sometimes but you just have to keep working super hard and um no matter whether you're a guy or a girl or whatever you are like you can get to where you want to be like i just like as long as as long as you just you know work really hard and like stick to it and don't let those little things bring you down but yeah i don't know I, i've never like really experienced anything like too mm -hmm. crazy you know being a girl like it's, it's definitely, I feel like it's played to my advantage. Like, I love being a girl in the industry because it's like, if you if you work just as hard as a guy, yeah, then you'll get there too. I feel, I feel like, I mean, like, everyone's different, right? They can't, like, um, you can't put anyone in, like, a category. I've seen a lot of people just, like, feel like they can just, like, get where they want to be without putting in that hard work. Mm, yeah. And people don't realize how much work it takes to, to get exactly where you want to be yeah. especially in this industry it's super hard so um yes yeah, so it's like no matter who you are you're gonna face setbacks yeah but you just have to you know like put your head down and mm -hmm. put in that work it's yeah 
How did you meet Gasly and how did your love for likes mix happen? Um, oh yeah, the, both those stories are pretty, like, pretty random. Um, first of all, uh, how I met uh, David, we start off, <laughs> so this is like pretty, pretty random, but um, uh, like I had kind of like started to hear about him like when I first like came to LA he knew a lot of people I knew. Mm -hmm. And then I went home after my first visit and one of my uh, buddies was at um, some sort of party with him. And I was like at home like super bored and my buddy, like my friend sent me a Snapchat of him like eating, it was like David, he was like eating like a bag of hot Cheetos. Mm -hmm. And like I randomly got this idea to like, um, I don't know, have you ever seen like those uh, photos where people like draw slime on top of them? I think so, yeah. They like seem to be, they got really popular for a bit, like where people just draw slime over it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm gonna like do that to like a photo like this. So I was like, hey, can you send me like one more Snapchat of this? And my friend was like, okay. <laughs> send me a Snapchat. And then I like drew, I drew like, David had like the bag of like Cheetos at his mouth open to eat one and I, I drew it so it looked like he was he was puking like the hot oh God, Cheetos so out sick. with like slime. I think I've actually seen that. That's yeah, he put it on his Instagram and then, uh, yeah, my friend sent it and he thought it was super cool. And, um, and then later on, like the next time I went to LA, uh, Miha had like a, a shoot uh, and a barbecue for, for uh, one of her uh, music videos. And um, we, uh, he was there and I was like, oh, that dude. And um, I like introduced myself and was like, hey, um, I'm Montana. I'm the one who uh, I drew puking uh, <laughs> Cheetos. That description, I love and, it. And he was like, whoa, like, nice to meet you. And then he gave me his number and he was like, hey, let's work on designs sometime. And then mm -hmm. that's how we started hanging out. And um, it's really funny because later on, um, a little bit later that year, he actually ended up puking hot Cheetos on me. So it was what? like... What? Oh my God, what? full circle yeah, for full sure. Circle. And then the whole snake thing started. Um, we were in, we were on the plane, and someone just airdropped me a photo of a really cool snake. Like mm -hmm. some random person on the plane just like kept airdropping me stuff. What? And there was like this really cool photo of a snake. I'm like, oh, I love snakes. Yeah. I was like, this snake is really cool. I was like, I really want a pet snake. And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just start, started getting it. I got one <laughs> snake, and then David was like, oh, I really like snakes too. <laughs> so then he started getting snakes. And we both started getting snakes. Yeah. And, uh, we got like a bunch of snakes together and now we got six snakes. <laughs> so. What would you say have been your biggest struggles so far? Oh my gosh, I don't know, there's been so many. I think um, the biggest struggle I've had, and I've had it my whole life, and I'll keep having it, it's just like, you know, just like battles between me and myself mm. and um, just, uh, there's just like times where things just like aren't working out in my head and it just like gets really bad and then It'll just, it just goes up and down, and uh, especially just doing creative work. I get really frustrated when I can't, um, when I can't find my creativity. And then, um, you know, just like, when you are create, we have a creativity block, it gets really tough. Yeah. Um, there's been lots of different struggles when I, um, when I was, I think it was like my last year of high school, um, I had a really bad fall off my horse, and I had many before, oh, I had like crap. nine concussions, mm -hmm. and then that last one, I guess, um, left me with like some sort of brain damage, oh, it was wow. like neurological brain damage, and it wasn't like terrible, like it could have been way worse, it could have been like, you know, like paralyzed or whatnot, it could have been so much worse, but definitely um, since I, you know, like I can't work through, and it'll it'll get better and better as time goes yeah. by. Yeah. Um, so that that's probably like one of my biggest struggles. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah. How, how do you think you've grown as a person since when you started? Um, oh, a lot. I've become a lot more mature. Mm. Uh, for sure. I'm still, you know, I'm still a little kid, but um, definitely like my work ethics gotten a lot better, and uh, just like dealing with people. I, I get really like nervous talking to strangers and being in like public and like answering the phone. I used to like mm, not same. be. Same. Yeah. I still hate answering I the phone. I was like <laughs> literally like phone calls. Like people were like, okay, so let's hop on a call about this. I I'm, hate like, it so much too. I'm like, I'm, like oh, no. I really want to do this via email. <laughs> yeah, it's so like, so I've gotten better at doing that stuff for sure and just talking to people because 
I always get really, really like nervous and start freaking out. Mm -hmm. I used to get a lot of like random panic attacks, like just like being around people. And it's not like, not like, um, I'm definitely not, I don't think I'm an extremely socially awkward person, but it's just randomly like, I just like, I'll be somewhere and I'm like, I can't be here right now, mm -hmm. like, gotta go. <laughs> um, so I've gotten better at, at dealing with that. Yeah. And, like, kind of just pushing myself to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit braver. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. More of an adult. Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh my gosh, that's a really tough one. <laughs> um, I guess like, like, um, to answer that broadly, like, for my, definitely for like my art, mm. of course, like as every artist probably would. Um, I'd also, you know, I'd like to have like the things that I say be remembered about. Um, like I definitely, um, as, as I get older and uh, better at what I do, mm -hmm. I wanna, you know, start, yeah, start making documentaries that yeah. uh, really uh, speak to people about um, the environment and mainly about like the way people treat animals. Um, I really, I really wanna make a difference with all of that that's really important to me like since I since I was little I was always wanted to do something to help animals so I definitely like to be remembered for that or you know not even me be remembered for that but what I do mm. um, for that be remembered so so there could be some sort of a change that happens yeah I love that so much yeah. thank you so much that was awesome <laughs> bye right, bye